Look at my hair, it's really fun. Hello guys, how are we all doing today? Just before we get started, I want to get a little quick update on the couples project. Here are some photos I took. <laughs> Cool, eh? Today I want to talk about two really boring mundane things. Well, boring and mundane to me, but I know a lot of you guys will find it very useful because you guys ask me almost every video. So today I'm going to be talking about my favourite Fujifilm film simulation and I'm also going to talk about how I set up my X100V for street photography. Not necessarily the settings but how I set it up, how I set up the buttons and the dials so that I can get the most out of it and shoot the way I want to shoot when I shoot street photography. Firstly let's talk about how I set up the X100V for street photography. Again, just a disclaimer here, guys. This is how I set it up. I don't know if it's the best way. I don't even, I don't even know if it's the best way for me right now. Personally, I like to shoot in complete full manual. So manual exposure. Um, I do shoot with autofocus. I use single point focus, but I do things a bit differently. So even though people love the aperture dial on the X100V and the shutter dial up top, me personally, Yes, it looked great, it looks really nice, but it's really slow, it's clunky, it's just not ergonomically friendly because when you're out and about shooting, having one hand here and then another hand up here to change the shutter speed is just really slow. So instead of having to change the aperture here on the dial, I actually set the front wheel for my aperture and I set the rear wheel for my shutter speed and I leave the ISO dial pretty much untouched for the entire day unless you know I'm going from day to night or from day to evening or going indoors outdoors the reason why I much prefer the front and rear dial being my aperture and shutter speed is because I do not have to change my grip in order to get my exposure <laughs> If I want to increase my aperture, I just roll it one way. Whereas with the aperture dial, you have to do this. And it's just a bit slower, it's just a bit clunkier. And likewise with the shutter speed. I really like the fact that I can control and shoot with just one hand. You know, that means potentially I could be walking down the street with a cup of coffee in my hand and just taking shots. It's like, oh, lovely, lovely. Sip, sip. Two important things to note is that you need to set your aperture onto A first and then you'll be able to use the front wheel as your aperture. Secondly, is that the rear wheel, um, if you set it as your shutter speed, it will only give you a sort of range to change your shutter speed by. So by about three quarters of a stop above and below the shutter speed that is set on the dial. Does that make sense? <laughs> Also, why do I shoot in single focus as opposed to continuous? Um, for me personally, I don't really track subjects, I don't find them and then sort of move and along with them. I kind of, I tend to, not always, but I tend to allow my subjects to move into the frame and I find that single point focus is just a bit more reliable um, than continuous focus. The only time I use continuous focus and where I find it to be really reliable is in video. Two other things I like to use, electronic level it helps me keep my horizon straight and I also like to use the grid because it's just, it's so helpful, so useful when it comes to composition, helps you easily keep your compositions nice and balanced. <laughs> Right. 
These sort of little things make the shooting experience far more streamlined, far more convenient, far more comfortable, and therefore will make you want to go out and shoot more because that is what it's all about guys finding ways to shoot more you know if your gear gets in the way of you going out and shooting more then it then maybe it's time to change your gear okay because the more you shoot the more potential for you to get bangers 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 Let's talk about my favorite film simulation. I always get at least one or two questions about what, you know, how did I edit this? What, you know, what preset did I use? I'll just say this now. Hopefully I get, I'll stop being asked it. <laughs> Whenever I shoot digitally, I shoot almost exclusively with the Portra 160 recipe by Fuji X Weekly. Um, I've been doing that since about August, September of last year. And so, so yeah, so now that you know, hopefully people will stop asking. <laughs> if it changes, I'll let you know. And also, just in case you're wondering, I shoot all of my videos with the X-T3 and with the Eterna Film Simulation with a little custom white balance. And I don't grade it. Like, I, I just don't see the need <laughs> like, look at this I, I think it looks amazing it looks, i think it looks really nice and i've been shooting i don't know if you guys i don't know if you guys have noticed but i've been shooting all the videos with a vintage lens i haven't even used any fuji native lenses in a very long time um i really like this canon fd 35 mm f2 because as you can see it's kind of got this nice little warm tinge to it and that's because of the lens um, the lens just makes everything really warm. It's quite famous for this um, for this unique characteristic. Yeah, how do you what do you guys think of this image? Looks good, right? Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> okay, so. So I'm talking about Eterna because for a long time, I shot predominantly Eterna for my stills as well. But then after a while, I, you know, I felt like I wanted a change. I wanted something different. I love Eterna because it's very neutral. The colors are very soft. Um, it's a great starting point. It's a very neutral look. So you can, um, you know, it's very natural looking as well, I, I'd, I'd say. But I wanted something different for my stills. So when I first got the X100V, I tried out the color negative film simulation and I really liked it. I uh, shot it for a while, but then after a while, I found it to be a bit too grungy, a bit too gritty. Um, you know, the, the greens are just uh, a bit too blue. It didn't fit in well with the rest of my sort of work, namely my film images. It just didn't fit in with the rest of the work. So I felt like I needed to go back to a more neutral, um, sort of soft, pastel color palette you know so i went looking around and i found the portrait 160 recipe by fuji x weekly what he's done for the fuji community is amazing like he has pretty much a recipe for every film sort you can think of even though they don't look like exactly like the film socks they're just all really good recipes um no affiliation with him i don't even think he knows who i exist but yeah i just want to shout him out because he's doing great things for Fuji shooters around the world and for free as well yeah so yeah I really like the Porter 160 recipe because it's just a really the colors are really soft really natural looking um, you know they, they, they're kind of soft but warm at the same time this recipe has just made it really easy to give me a consistent look across both my film and digital work however I will say that I have modified the recipe ever so slightly with a custom white balance, nothing major, um, just to give it a bit of a red pinkish tint. However, that's just for me. I don't want to share that with you guys. It's, it's not thing, nothing big, but I do feel it's important for for you guys, yeah, for photographers, just to keep some things for themselves. 
you don't have to share every minute detail of your process like you know keep some things for yourself you know anyways guys i hope you enjoyed that i hope you enjoyed some of the sample photos um yeah just a quick simple one nothing too flashy that's all i have time for you guys say so subscribe if you have not already most of you guys don't subscribe to the channel what's that about man um follow me on instagram as a reason photo keep learning keep shooting i'll see you all in the next one peace